Hi everyone. Welcome to our uh, recruitment Q&A session. So we're going to use this time to ask our panelists any general questions that you might have about Georgian. So please post your questions in the chat box, chat box and we will answer as many as we can. So we're going to be bringing in Kaylee, who is a student recruitment specialist, as well as Mustafa, who's a regional manager of International. Um, great, so uh, welcome you guys for for uh, for taking the time to join us today. Um, so maybe we can get started off with um, uh, Mustafa and ask some questions about international. Um, why is having the right study plan so important for international students and how does someone prepare a good study plan? Hello, hello everyone by the way. Hi Jenny. Uh, so it is, it is very important because uh, uh, applying for a program is one thing. Uh, the program has to be right, the intake has to be right, uh, there are a lot of processing times uh, in non application related processing time. Visa processing time is, is the most important one. Uh, so if a student doesn't know the, the current study permit application processing time in the home country, uh, it will be very difficult for them to uh, determine the right intake. Uh, because uh, right now, as an example, if someone is applying from Jordan, uh, there is a 28 weeks of uh, visa application processing time. If that student applies for summer intake, so most probably he's not going to be able to make it. So that's why uh, uh, creating a study plan before they apply is very, very important. Uh, the second thing is the uh, uh, choosing a program is very important. Uh, and so students have to uh, mind those processing times before they apply. So that's why we are here at the International Department. We help them, we help them with their study plan uh, so they don't have uh, those problems. Yeah, fantastic. And, um, you know, jumping into the academic side too, um, before they even start their academic program, um, how can an international student determine how much English language training they might need? Oh yeah, so it's it's a case for many international students actually, so not everybody has uh, the required uh, English level. Uh, so the most important thing is that Georgian College accepts the uh, English language proficiency tests, uh, IELTS, TOEFL kind of tests. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we have the English pathway programs uh, with private language schools in Canada uh, and we have our own English, uh, English for academic purposes program. So students got a lot of choices, but uh, I would always uh, encourage them to take uh, an English language proficiency test like IELTS or TOEFL, even if they see that they're not going to be able to meet the final requirements. So uh, the score will give us an idea for how long English language training that they would need. So then we will be able to help them uh, make a right study uh, plan. Uh, and we have a test, it's called uh, Cambridge Michigan test. Uh, if the students prefer to um, uh, apply through an agent, uh, authorized Georgian college agent in their home countries, so they will be able to find um, an agent uh, that has got the uh, proctoring rights of the tests in a supervised environment and all. So when they take our uh, English assessment test and we'll be able to know exactly what level they are tested at and how long English education that they would need. OK, perfect. And um, what would be the best time for them to apply for a program? Um, are there deadlines for that that they should be aware of? Oh, luckily, so Georgian College has an ongoing admission process. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing. We don't have deadlines for certain programs, few programs, health related programs, so we have deadlines, but usually first come first serve. So that's why uh, the earlier the better, uh, but application process is not the only uh, time frame during this journey. So there are a lot of things, the visa applications, getting prepared, getting to documents uh, ready, waiting for uh, the application uh, uh, decision from Georgian College. So it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a lot of processing times involved. So that's why we always advise them to contact us. So we'll guide them through uh, and we will tell them that this is the best time to apply. But we always say that six months, at least six months prior to the uh, start date is always the, the safe period of time for, for many students. 
OK, great. Yeah, that's great to know. And I want to throw over to uh, throw it over to Kaylee as well. Um, so she does deals with more of the, the domestic students in that side. So maybe can you address that same sort of question, Kaylee, about when would be the best time to apply for programs for domestic sure. students? <clears throat> sure. Can you hear me OK? Yeah, we can hear you. Awesome. Um, so ours is a little bit different for the domestic students. So we, we're subject to um, an application cycle through OntarioColleges.ca. And I'm not sure whether that session has happened as far as admissions and how to apply, but if, if you missed it, the, the Coles notes of how to apply as a domestic student is you would go on to OntarioColleges.ca, make a profile much the same as you would if you were signing up for Spotify or something else. They're going to ask you personal information, where you live, your educational history, and then you can choose a, a series up to five of, of programs. Now, as far as timing goes, if you're looking to uh, be granted admission for fall of 2021, then you would want to apply for that now. The cycle opened on October 1st and it will remain open until February 1st, 2021 in a period of what is known as equal consideration. And what that means is that that doesn't matter if you're looking for fall 21, it doesn't matter whether you apply today, tomorrow, next week, Christmas day, January 30th, it doesn't matter. Nothing is looked at until February 1st, 2021. And then uh, after that, they're going to start reviewing applications. Now, that date is really important because uh, if you're looking at a competitive program, then you're pretty much guaranteed that it will fill as of the first day. And they're going to have enough people that are that have applied and, and will be able to select and fill that program. So if you're a high school student and you're watching this now, you're going to find that your guidance teams are probably going to be encouraging you to make that application, make that profile and start filling those things out now. It doesn't mean that you have to have it all locked in and figured out right now. If you have an epiphany over Christmas turkey and decide that you don't want to be a paramedic and you want to be a civil engineer, that's cool. You can change your mind, just go in and change your options. But make sure you get that application active and make sure it's submitted before February 1st, 2021. Great. Um, and I've got a question here that I think you can both answer. Maybe we'll start with you again, Kaylee, and then go over to Mustafa. Um, but someone's asking, when will we know if we got accepted into college? So can we address that sort of um, that process there for domestic and international students? Sure. Do you want me to go first? Yes. All right. Um, so you could hear pretty quickly after February 1st, depending on your program and whether or not there are any supplemental requirements, if there's a test or if there's some kind of a portfolio or, or things of that nature that they're going to be reviewing, you could hear within you know, a couple of weeks of whether or not you're accepted. Um, you will hear in advance of May 4th. So between February 1st and May 3rd or 4th, I apologize, I don't know the exact date off the top of my head. I think it's May 3rd. We'll check that. Anyway, um, that's the date that you have to accept and confirm your offer. So you'll get an offer sometime likely in February or early March if you've applied by the February 1st deadline and have all your supplementals in. And uh, at that point, you'll you'll be invited to confirm your seat. Great, and then so Mustafa is the, can you speak to the um, the process of finding out when they've been um, accepted for international students? Oh, I think you're just on, on mute there. Here we go, sorry. Uh, so the first step uh, would be uh, for a student to go to our uh, online student application portal uh, create a profile there, upload their documents and choose the intake that they wish to study at. And then after that, apply for the program officially. So once they submit their applications, uh, our international uh, team receives the applications and, and, and uh, does some uh, required screening to make sure that the documents are complete, everything is OK. So then after that, the, uh, all the application will be forwarded to uh, our register office for an academic review. So and that's because we have the ongoing uh, admission cycle, so they will be able to apply for the program as long as there's an availability and they will see if a program is available in certain intake uh, through this uh, uh, student application portal. So it's, 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 it's a pretty smooth transition. Great, that's great. Um, and Kaylee, um, there's a question here I'd like to throw to you. It's is it possible for me to only select one program we love your enthusiasm here for Georgian's programs here, like business accounting they're mentioning. Um, can they only select one or do they have to select several options? No, no, you can you can totally select one. But what I'll say about that 
is that the application fee of $95 covers up to five. So if you really have your heart set on coming to Georgian College, three out of the five can be for Georgian programming. You do not have to fill out all five. But if you decide you want to spread out your options and, and consider some other things, you can fill out all five at five different institutions should you choose to do that. But it, it really doesn't matter. You can fill out one, you can fill out five, but if you really want to go to a particular school, if you really want to come to Georgian, only three of the five can be for Georgian programs. Okay, perfect. Um, and so we've got some people looking toward uh, winter 2021 intake. Um, is it too late to apply for January programs? What say you, Kaylee? Absolutely not. We would love to have you com come and apply. What we would do is if um, if you go on to ontariocolleges.ca, you can search for your program of choice and you can search by campus, you can search by intake and you can see it's kind of like a stoplight. So if your program is listed as green, that means it's open and that you can apply for it. If it's listed as yellow, then that means that it's waitlisted, which means we have a lot of applications. We are not sure if we're going to get through that waitlist. And if it's red, that means that it's closed and you cannot apply for it. So if if you want to apply, you want to come in January, we still have lots of room and lots of programs. Definitely recommend giving that a look and uh, yeah, activate that application. Wonderful. Um, and we have a question here um, that I'll give to you, Mustafa. Uh, it's asking, will the students of January intake be allowed to enter Canada? Uh, so they are actually it's a, a little bit uh, immigration related question, uh, but with the latest update, they will be able to come to Canada. Uh, so because we hope to be on the DLI list this Friday, so because uh, the ministry uh, renews to updates the list every two weeks. Uh, so once we have uh, we are approved the ally in that list, so they will be able to come to Canada if they have a visa. OK, wonderful. Um, and we have a question here about highly competitive programs. Um, they're wondering, is the paramedic program highly competitive? It says and as of March, let's say I got a 73 percent in a class from high school, but my mark for the program is supposed to be a 75 or percent or higher. Will I still have a chance of getting in? Um, Kaylee, maybe you can take that one. Sure, happy to. Um, highly competitive means, of course, that we get far more applications than we have seats available. Uh, paramedic is one of the most competitive programs at Georgian College, and as such, there are certain things that we're going to be looking for for our applicants. Um, one of the things you need to know about how we select who gets in is that Georgian does not offer grade differentials. So no matter which academic stream you took in high school, whether it's a college or university stream, all we see is the grade. So for what it's worth, we recommend taking whatever academic stream will benefit you for the admissions side. If you take the U-level stream, it may benefit you more as far as the curriculum goes, but it, it won't impact your admissions decisions. Um, so hopefully that answers the question about the, the grade point average. What was the other part of that question? I'm sorry. Um, they were just wondering, is the, the paramedic program highly competitive? It is. Now, when you're on the website and you're able to take a look at the paramedic program, it'll give you, I don't know whether I can share my screen. Is that an option to do that? All right, let, let me do that and then I can just show you. That might be the easiest. OK, can you see my screen now? Yes, we can. Perfect. So this is the main site and if you're looking for paramedic, this is what you do. These are all tabs that if you hover your mouse over it, a blue banner will open. And again, we have 130 programs at Georgian. We divide them as far as the organization and here by academic area, paramedic would fall under our health, wellness and science portfolio. So if we click on that. It's going to take us to the landing page. And if I scroll down, then I can see our programs and paramedic is right here. So when I click on this, it's going to take me to the landing page, sort of the high level information that you're looking for if you're looking and this. This is the same for any program at Georgian, so it's going to take you to the high level information of the, the types of things that you'll need to know about applying for any program. In this particular case, here's the four letter OCAS code paramedic. This one is only offered out of the Barry campus with only a fall start date. Incidentally, we do offer three intakes year round. We offer fall, winter and summer, so if you choose that you want to start at a different time, then that would be listed there. Scrolling down, program description, accreditation, and here we go, program is highly competitive. So if I click on this, it's gonna open up in a second tab, and it's gonna open up a little chart here that's gonna talk about what highly competitive programs look like at Georgian. So we can see dental assisting, marine na navigation technology, and here's paramedic. 
So it's going to say that it's going to require these four prerequisites or these programs as far as admission criteria and a minimum 80% required in these subjects. So we're looking for grade 12 English, math, biology, and uh, chemistry in these programs. Now, if I scroll back up, it's going to say that there's other things that other programs might be looking for, whether it's a, a portfolio or whether there's, there's a test. So for this one, because it's listing only the admission criteria, that's what we're going to be looking for. And then if I go back to the paramedic program quickly, just in case you're curious, then if you scroll down a little bit further, then you can see some information about how we select who gets in. And I know there was a question in a previous uh, session with uh, co-op and placements about having uh, driver's licenses and things of that nature. So there's information here, especially specifically to paramedic, that's going to say that you do require um, to have an active license that obviously you'll be able to drive an ambulance. So we're trying to give you all the information on the outset for the things that you're going to need to make an educated decision about how you're going to use those five options within your OCAS application. Great. Yeah, lots of resources there to check out for sure. Um, and we've got a couple questions here um, from Brigitte and from Stephanie. Uh, very similar questions here. They're saying, um, well, Stephanie says, I am a Francophone and I am applying to come to Georgian in September 2021. I have my grade 12 English credit. <clears throat> Excuse me. Would I still have to take an English profi proficiency test? Um, and likewise, Brigitte was wondering if there, if this, if a student's coming from a French high school, but they have English credits. So w would someone in, the, in those situations, would they need uh, an English profi proficiency test, Kaylee? It's my understanding that provided that they have the English at the grade 12 college level, then that's what they're going to be looking for. So again, not an admissions officer. I don't want to say 100% yes or no, that would be one that I would probably defer just in case as a as a, a fail safe. But my my default would say that as long as you have grade 12 English at the college level and that's required as part of your admission criteria, then that's what we would be looking for. OK, perfect. Um, and I guess speaking before about um, those highly competitive programs, we have a question about our vet tech vet tech program, um, which is on that list. Um, they're wondering, how will I know what documentation to submit with my application? I am applying for vet tech and this would be a second career plan. Uh, I really wish to come to Georgian. Yay! Um, as I hear, they have the best program out there. Yes, we do, don't we? Um, so uh, what would you guys say? Is that one for me or for? Uh, yeah, Kaylee, if you want to take that one. Sure, I'm going to jump into the website again and show you exactly where you can find what it is that we're going to be looking for. So just give me one second here. OK, can you see that again? Uh, yes, there All it is. Right. So similar process, academics, vet tech, of course, is under our health and wellness and sciences portfolio, clicking on that. And we're going to go down here to veterinary technician. Now I want to show you two things on this site that uh, again, no matter what program that you're looking at at Georgian's website, this information is going to be the same as far as where you can find it. So you're seeing the same information that we offer fall 2021 starts. Aurelia campus is where this program is offered and of course that's by virtue of the fact that that's where the animal care facility is. This is a full time program, highly competitive. Um, and we'll go into that in just a moment. Admission criteria, we're going to need English, math, biology, chemistry, pathways, how we pick who gets in. Now quickly, I do want to say about vet tech specifically, this program requires an applicant to have completed the health occupational aptitude examination. Now this is not a Georgian specific test. This is one that many schools may use for admission for programs in a similar nature. So it's something you write once and use for multiple um, admission options across the province. If you're curious about what it looks like, there's lots of information online that you can go and see practice questions and, and familiarize yourself with what to prepare. And then it's, you've got information about uh, program specific courses down here. Now what I want to show you if I just might have just a moment. So if you click on these and you're like, oh, this sounds kind of fun. I wonder what introduction to veterinary technology looks like. You, you can't click on that. But if you scroll back up the page, on the right hand side of the column, you can see some program specific information. Apply now, connect with us, Life at Georgian. Here's some alumni profiles for students in vet tech. Important links, rabies vaccin vaccination information, entrance tests. And then down here, program outlines to 2021-2022. If I click on that, 
then this takes us to the Georgian specific program outline. So it's kind of like the previous page, but with way more cool stuff. So we've got some information here, more detailed description, career opportunities, and then right away we see a difference. And this again, no matter what program you're looking at, you're going to see program learning outcomes. By the time a graduate has completed our program and we certify that, yes, you can move, move forward with your certification, we will say in this particular case that you can demonstrate the ability to perform the following 17 learning outcomes. So that's great if you're looking and, and wanting to compare against other institutions. This is what we will tell you that we will educate and train you to do. External recognition is down here in this case with the veterinary technician with the Canadian uh, Medical Veterinary Medical Association program progression articulation. If you wish to transfer this towards degree studies, how we choose who gets in. And then of course with this one, we've got pre exposure to rabies vaccination. But what I wanted to show you is this. If you're curious, well, you know, what am I going to be taking with an introduction to ver veterinary technology? If you click on this specific course on this page, it's going to open up a bubble that will give you a description of this particular course's um, learning outcomes and, and what you're going to be learning. So you'll see that over the course of a 14 week typical semester, you'll be in, in class for 42 hours. This is what you'll learn in this particular class. And at the end of the program, if you scroll all the way down, you'll see that you've achieved 1,720 hours within this program. So lots of really good information, and it doesn't matter if you're looking at business entrepreneurship, marine navigation, or paramedic. We're gonna have these similar types of sites, no matter what uh, program you're looking at within our website. Okay, great. Um, and we have a question here um, that I think we could address uh, for both domestic and international students would be great. So maybe Mustafa, can we start with you? Um, are students allowed to defer an offer of admission? Yes, yes, they, yes, they can. They can, as long as there's an availability uh, in the program uh, for the intake that they are willing to defer their programs to. Uh, so, but it's, 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 it's a common thing that we do everyday deferrals. Uh, students uh, don't get ready by the time uh, for the intake, so they have to defer their programs. Most of the time, yes, uh, we can do it, but it depends on the availability of the program in the next uh, semester. That's the only thing that they should uh, consider for. Okay, and Kaylee, for domestic students, it would be also yes? No, that's a difference. Um, we, we do not offer deferrals for domestic students. So if you are looking to apply to another intake that is within the next application cycle, then you'll need to make that application again. Now, having said that, the OCAS application that you might be putting in, um, you could apply to multiple different intakes, but it all has to be within that same cycle. And you'll see some more information about those dates within the OCAS website. And I'll be happy to be corrected by admissions if somehow I have that wrong, but I'm pretty confident in domestic. We do not offer uh, grade uh, de or deferrals. OK, great. Um, and we've got a question here. Um, I'm taking my admission requirement classes right now in grade 12, so the college won't see those grades until I graduate high school. Will that prevent me from being accepted? What what would this mean for for this person? They're looking. I guess it says there are there. Uh, they'd like to apply to apply to practical nursing. Maybe Kelly, can you take that question? Sure. So what they would likely do is look at your if you said that you were in grade 12 and you're working on it's a common thing that especially in smaller, more rural high schools that they don't offer all of the course prerequisites you need in grade 12 for a course that you're taking next next September in, in semester one. So what they would do is if if you know, let's say it's biology that that's not offered for you until September, uh, semester two and that's after you would have had to submit your application. What they might do is look at a grade 11 mark and if that looks like that you would be on track that you've got that credit and that you are enrolled in that program what they may do is offer what's called a conditional acceptance so um, pending completion successful completion of that program then that would be turned to a full acceptance um, but that's typically how that would work in a general sense okay great um, and we've got a question here. I feel like because um, we have students from all ages, some people coming back after being in college or, or after high school. Um, and there's a question here asking about what if what happens if you take a leap year? So if you take an extra year between high school and and going off to post secondary, um, would I need to take different steps for applying or would it be the same as if I were applying this year? 
what is that, uh, what, is that one me again yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um no it's it's the same so it, it doesn't matter whether you were in school you know this past year or whether you're going to graduate or whether it's been 10 years we are still going to look for those admission criteria so we're going to look for the high school diploma or equivalent grade 12 english at the college level and then so on and so forth from there depending on your program now having said that if you are missing high school credits or um, prerequisites that uh, you require and it, you are a mature student and you feel that you have you know you've been working as a bookkeeper for 30 years and you don't want to go back and get your grade 12 math or whatever it is then there are different tests that you can take for equivalency if you feel that you have that experience um, but essentially we will be looking for the same admission types criteria types of criteria so um, definitely if you've got specific questions we recommend just reaching out to us you can reach any of any of the members of the recruitment team by emailing us at recruitment at georgiancollege.ca and I, I've been at this 12 years. I've heard it all. There's no silly questions, so please feel free to be in touch and uh, yeah, we're, we're happy to help or you can book a one to one phone appointment to talk with us as well about your specific uh, questions. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Um, this question Q&A session is now coming to a close. Thank you so much to Kaylee and Mustafa for joining us and to everyone of you who joined us today.